With any device that captures information, be it video or photos, your camera will capture the data, process the data, and then store the data. Sometimes it will capture the data faster than it can write that data to the card. Let's say your camera can capture 10 photo frames per second, but your card can only write three frames per second. If your camera didn't have a buffer, the data would bottleneck in the system. With a buffer, it would fire off the frames at 10 frames a second. Let's say 40 frames over four seconds, all of which would go into the buffer memory. Then it would take a total of 13 seconds to write them all to the memory card from the buffer if the write speed equated to three frames a second. While she waited for your next photo opportunity, the camera would still be busy writing the rest of those 40 frames to the card. And this is why sometimes that red light on the back of the camera will be flashing away even after you've stopped shooting. The buffer is a quick and fast temporary memory slot for your photos, but it's relatively small compared to the capacity of your memory card. So the bigger the buffer, the more frames your camera can take before it starts to slow down. Generally, the more expensive the camera, the larger the buffer and the faster the writing capabilities of the memory card slot. In saying all of that, there are a couple of other things that will affect this as well. If you have a slow memory card, this will slow down the transfer speeds from that buffer to the card. And if you have a cheap camera, chances are they will use a slower memory card port that can only transfer data up to a certain rate. So if you have a blazingly fast memory card and a cheap camera, the write speed of the card would be fine, but the writing capacity of the camera might be slower. So this would limit the amount of images that can be written to the card for a given time unit. Now this won't affect the top frame rate per second that your camera can take, but it will mean that you'll have to wait for longer for that buffer to clear after taking the photos. So expensive cameras can take full advantage of the fastest memory cards to clear the buffer more quickly, and also have a much bigger buffer to hold a lot more images in the first place. The main advantage with the camera having a buffer is that it can have faster drive speeds than normal, and they can use slightly cheaper card slots with slower write speeds. Most people will take a few shots, maybe a burst of five to 10, and then wait. So the camera can then take advantage of this waiting time by unloading the images in a longer time scale, but still utilizing that faster shutter speed that your camera offers. Now, if you were to press and hold your shutter button down in the fastest drive mode, you'll notice that it'll fire off a certain number of images at that high speed, but after a while, it will slow down. This is when the buffer is full and then the speed will reduce significantly. Then it will only take another photo when a new slot becomes available. So as your camera writes one of those images to the card, it will clear that slot on the buffer and then your camera will take another shot, but it will be full again. And then it will write that next one and then it will be able to take another one. So if your camera didn't have the buffer, this would be the maximum drive speed of your camera for the given memory card. So the buffer is basically a waiting area for your images before they get filed into their appropriate places on the memory card. Now to learn how to photograph soap bubbles, click on this next tutorial here. And to have a lot of fun learning about shooting portraits, click on this video down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography. I'll see you next time.